there are many people who have almost the cause of Cain upon their lives. They move like fugitives in life. Nobody is interested in your life to invest their credibility, their reputation, their resources. Can I tell you, if everybody hates you, the problem is you. It cannot be. Everybody cannot be stupid, demonic. Oh, it's because I love God. My way is different. You are lying. No. It, that would be an insult on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Human beings have mastered the art of avoiding trouble and they can discern trouble from afar. And when your life becomes a capture of a plethora of troubles. Join Apostle Joshua Salman in a life-changing sermon that explores the depths of God's love and wisdom. Discover practical insights for victorious living and a closer walk with the divine. Don't miss this opportunity to elevate your spiritual journey and experience the extraordinary. Stay tuned. If you want to maintain destiny relationships, there are a few keys that you must learn. Number one, you must rise above what we call competitive jealousy. You will never be able to maintain strategic destiny relationships when you know that you are prone to jealousy and this is not just an issue of spiritualizing it alone there is a psychology to this i have taught you again and i will repeat it it is not unusual to have this struggle around jealousy when you are in an atmosphere where you see results and then you are alienated from it but i advise you you can never maintain strategic relationships until you rise above competitive jealousy there are people who can never be in any circle except they are the leaders there. If they are not going to lead and call the shots there, they cannot go and sit quietly. It is a dangerous mentality. We got some of this mentality from culture. We got some of this mentality from our past demonic attacks. This is why when we come to the house of God, we allow the washing of the water and by the word. Are we together now? Avoid competitive jealousy. Let me just give you one scripture on this proverbs 14 30. let's hurry up proverbs 14 30. the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones envy is a terrible thing jealousy so are you the only one who is dressing like this why is it that everybody comes they are greeting so 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 person and leaving me that's always how they are i've faced this since i was born it should be a reason to go for a retreat and say lord the same lord is rich unto all if they have done this to this person i take responsibility it means there is something i do not understand my brother or my sister what is the secret behind the favor of god in your life that i'm not seeing in my life and five minutes of spiritual lecture can deliver you from years of ignorance for someone this is a prophetic word god is giving you making careless assumptions and walking in competitive jealousy will always put you in trouble you see this sadly with preachers you see this with business people you see this in the house of god shouldn't be in the sky there are no traffic there's room for everybody are we together now number two let's hurry up the second key to maintaining relationships avoid evil speaking slash backbiting you must avoid it i'm teaching you this to empower you you cannot maintain relationships living in an atmosphere that is perpetually about evil speaking and backbiting nobody will accommodate you under that pungent atmosphere for some of you this is why nobody wants to come around your life there is nothing else to say except to gossip there is nothing else to say except to backbite you see i think it was dr miles munro who said losers talk about people are we together mediocres talk about things but great people talk about ideas never allow yourself to be the habitation of gossip and jealousy people come around and say hey there is a gisto you mean you've been in this abuja in nigeria and you've not heard do not allow your atmosphere to be the one that accommodates that pungent spirit say amen, amen. you must avoid evil speaking avoid backbiting 
some of you will talk about everybody and when there is nobody you will talk about yourself because you just have to say something be delivered from it in the name of jesus i'm not being sarcastic i'm helping you listen life will be so easy when you know how to attract and keep strategic relationships i told you relationships are investments this is how to make the investment when your atmosphere becomes conducive you will be surprised at the kinds of people who will gravitate to your life and with them will come every blessing that they carry in their hands when the magi came to jesus they all came together with what they were carrying when a wise man comes he comes with the benefits of his wisdom to your life are we learning now so avoid evil speaking avoid backbiting number three very quickly practice forgiveness and tolerance practice forgiveness and tolerance it will be impossible for you to maintain relationships all through your lifetime if you cannot practice forgiveness and tolerance i've taught you here in koinonia the difference between forgiveness and tolerance let me say it that forgiveness has to do with providing pardon to over a default tolerance means accommodating the intrinsic weaknesses of people because it will happen again and again and again for instance if a talkative tells you sorry i will not talk again you don't have to forgive the person you are wasting your time what you need is what tolerance say amen, amen. practice forgiveness there are some of us you you are you are angry with everybody including god you don't forgive anybody at all someone knocks your door four times instead of three times and that becomes an offense that you carry for 10 years where do you know this guy 1991 he knocked my door four times instead of three times no you have to deliver yourself listen listen while you are laughing i hope you are paying attention you must be when you carry the luggages of hate and bitterness you are affecting your own life too are we together now yes Carrying offense and, and unforgiveness is like swallowing poison and expecting another person to die. If you don't practice tolerance, you will hurt yourself many times because even the best of people who will come to your life will have their limitations. It is, it is, it is a reality with all men. Are we together now? Looking for perfection is a waste of time. You will never find it. Have you seen someone try to kill a mosquito that is around your face? You may miss the mosquito, but one thing you will never miss is the slap on your face. And then the mosquito comes again. Look for an effective way to kill it. You keep at the end of it, 10 slaps and yet the mosquito is not dead. That's what many people are doing to their souls. Set yourself free tonight in the name of Jesus Christ my brother did this my mother did this one cousin did this set yourself free and it is it listen it's a revelation of a superior way of living a superior way of living are we together now you want to maintain relationships you must practice forgiveness and tolerance let me give you can i give you two more what number are we now number four be an active contributor to the growth of the relationship seeing that your relationship is a, a, any kind of relationship i spoke about valentine and some of you think i'm against it i'm not against it oh. go on with your plan as planned provided you, you are doing what you are doing in wisdom minus god minus wisdom don't do it are we together now be an active contributor to the growth of the relationship please look at me relationships do not build themselves they are built by the parties involved are we together now yes you this is true for married couples this is true for business relationships this is true for parents and children anybody who does not become an active contributor there there's there's what they call parasitic relationships 
where there are people who don't bring anything at all are we together relationships must be a healthy balance between expectations and contributions when your expectation in a relationship far outweighs your contribution you are a selfish person when your contribution far outweighs your expectation somebody is being unfair on you there must be a healthy balance are we together you cannot contribute one thousand naira worth of contribution and expect one million naira worth of expectation that is fraud are we together now it's like giving the bank one thousand naira and expecting 10 million tomorrow it doesn't work that way unfortunately there are people that's how their relationships are you never can trace the benefit that they bring into the system if they are workers in church they will never pay anybody's transport even as a seed they don't have anybody's birthday in mind including their family members they forget everything no the only thing they remember is their needs who has something to say me well i just want you to know that things are not really all right for me right now and um, i will appreciate whatever it is that anybody can do because i know that god uses men have you seen people like that the entire conversation is about them and i love you with all my heart everybody but particularly let me speak to you our dear sisters in the lord in the name of jesus let me give you counsel i don't talk so much about this but let me give you an honest counsel throw away some of these garbages that come in from misguided maybe in social media or what edit the things that you learn are we together the moment you are in any kind of relationship that makes it all about you you are already in trouble not even our relationship with god is all about him when we tell him god take everything he says no i'm not so selfish i will make sure that i attend to you also are we together now don't carry that narrative that is all about you you find this happen all around and people refuse to be active contributors so we have business partners one is just there like a parasite are you awake now may god bless you god will help you for us eh? in jesus name hear me where you do not have any definite value to offer let your value be gratitude where you do not have anything definite to offer make sure you keep showering that relationship with a lavish expression of gratitude you are a man and you are not doing anything and your wife is working bringing you money all the time and having the unashamedness to look like a fool before you my husband i'm submitting to you including this money children's school fees she's paid it house rent she's paid it and you say thanks no that's not wisdom don't be offended i'm saying this because i love you let me tell you gratitude is a big contribution in any relationship gratitude can equalize even what your value cannot bring i'm not able to do this but i'm really grateful i wouldn't have had the money to buy the fuel but thank you for stepping in i really want you to know that i am i am thoughtful and thankful for what you have done i think there there is um um i think it's yoruba people that do it that they thank twice they do that one in the night and then by the next day they do it again very healthy practice do it do it three times in fact in this in this world you want you want people to remember you i hope someone is learning man of god someone gives you a hundred million naira as a seed in ministry and you have access to know the person it's not to worship people but don't say i don't care god provides it no no don't speak like that you will be poor and you will struggle in ministry it's a very honest advice learn to appreciate people sincerely your wife treats you well tell her thank you don't say i paid your dowry already what is my no don't act like that you're a child of god your husband provides and then no matter how wealthy you are train your children to say thank you this entitlement mentality that is destroying africa they pay their school fees they do this teach them to say thank you are we together now thank you to god and thank you to men there are times you can just pick up your phone and begin to thank the people who have contributed greatly or significantly in your life 
the corporate organizations understand this this is why they keep excelling we in the church are masters of taking people for granted pastors i say this respectfully speaking when god gives you members and workers who love you and labor day and night seeing that the work is advanced don't take them for granted find every means within your power to say thank you and repeat it again and for koinonia workers thank you thank you and i really mean what i'm saying thank you our global family thank you for all of you who are here thank you if you are not here whether i am anointed or not that's not the issue it's one thing to be valuable but it's another thing for people to believe in you enough to invest their credibility their attention their resources their loyalty do not take them for granted is someone learning if somebody paints this kind of picture for you, will you under normal circumstances run away from that person? No. My husband doesn't love me. If it's an attack, that's all right. There's a miracle service coming. But under normal, <laughs> under, listen, listen, under normal circumstances, find out what is making your husband run away from you. You can't come and yell from morning till night, shouting, calling the man's name, remembering in 1999, it was 12 noon, you were wearing white, I remember, plus a dark shirt, you, and, you, and the man has returned tired. He will go out of the house and go and sleep in the office. I knew you were going to go out, come back, you will still meet me here. <laughs> and for men, let's tame our arrogance and say thank you and be there sometimes all this big manism for nothing once you cannot help yourself and people do for you what you cannot do for yourself be humble enough to acknowledge people it does not take anything out of you there are men who would rather say how are you i hope you are fine your dress is nice than to say thank you just say thank you men say it one more time say thank you koinonia men say it say thank you In the name of Jesus Christ. Are we learning? So you must be an active contributor to every relationship. Some of you right now, let me tell you this. After service, practice what you just learned now. Think of people who have significantly contributed to your life, including your boss that you may say you don't like. I just want to appreciate you, sir. I've learned something. I came to church and I was greatly inspired. Transformation is happening and I've decided to respond just to tell you I'm grateful. Let me tell you what to expect. Most of them will not reply. That does not mean the effect was not created. I'm giving you a teaser so you don't frown and say, you see, mm -mm. that's how it works. They will not reply, but the effect has been created. The day promotion will come, that's when you will know that text added up to your rising. There are many people who are grounded today because of ignorance. Become an active contributor. Someone helps you, gives you, say, a loan of one million naira, and you rise, and now you are a big man, and then you are going to his house and you buy orange of hundred naira. Haba, let's be, be honest. You carry hundred naira orange that you bought just at a junction near his house. The leather is even torn, and you wrap, tie it here, tie it here, and you just say, sorry, oh, no. Politicians understand this. Non-Christians understand this. They are masters of investing into strategic relationship. But church people, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, and other advantages like favor, these things are investment. Start making your investment now. After service, don't match people and push people and run around. You don't know that the person you just push is the doctor that will treat your child if he has malaria. No treat people with honor and with dignity are we together now don't look at someone say he came for koinonia he's looking like he's dressed in a rag he may be wearing rags but something is happening to his mind and tomorrow when you see the same son of man in power and glory you will bite your finger in regret is someone learning never be part of any kind of relationship where it is all about giving to you and you are not an active contributor it doesn't have to be money 
give love and support if someone decides to invest into your life your children i just called to say um, honorable just to greet you and to ask how you are doing i hope everything is fine my prayers and my blessings are with you in jesus name you have scheduled the season of continuous favor there are many people the day you get a text from them is because another request is coming calvary greetings just to let you know that uh, i am still here two minutes later they just say sorry just to let you know the one million again the rent the way you no you don't act like that don't give people memories of pain when they think about you if you are learning shout amen, amen. so my dear brother and my dear sister this may be one of the reasons why people run away from you it may also be the reason why no kind of relationship seems to work for you because you are always thinking about what people will give to you or you have very little value and contribution but you have unreasonably high expectation believing that everybody will come and give you heaven and earth it doesn't work that way as we conclude this enlightening sermon by apostle joshua selman let the depth of knowledge shared today be a catalyst for your ongoing educational journey. Apply the principles of wisdom, understanding, and divine insight in your pursuit of knowledge. Remember, education is not merely about information, but transformation of the mind and spirit. Carry the touch of learning into your studies professions and daily life may you continually grow in wisdom and impart your face of influence positively go forth empowered to be a beacon of knowledge and light don't forget to like comment and share this video with your loved ones god bless you